Hi, how are you? I'm good, Julian. How are you? Good, good, good. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Hi, uh, my name is Sam Eiglin. I'm the Director of Community Nutrition Services at Project Red. Uh, Project Red, we are uh, a Massachusetts-based anti-hunger nonprofit uh, where we work to create sustainable solutions to ending hunger uh, and ensure that we live in a world in Massachusetts where no one goes hungry. So, Sam, what would you say is your biggest success story over at Project Bread? Currently, well, you know, currently one of our, our great successes that we've seen is that recently our um, president and CEO, Aaron McAleer, uh, was invited, uh, one of 600 people invited to uh, the White House Conference on, on Hunger, Nutrition, and Health. Uh, and I think that really speaks to how far we've come organizationally uh, and our leadership in the anti-hunger space, as well as the innovations that we practice through our work. Uh, in my role at the organization, I work directly with school nutrition staff across the state. And, um, you know, I, I think I get to see the impact of our work every day with the school nutrition staff, with the students. Uh, in schools and um, the impact of free school meals, universal free school meals in Massachusetts that we've um, been advocating for and recently were able to have passed again through the end of this school year. So, And what would you say are the main factors that would considerably reduce food insecurity? Yeah, um, definitely uh, there's a need for education uh about and access to the resources that exist uh for folks who may be experiencing food insecurity uh as well as efforts to uh minimize any perceived stigma around um accessing uh nutrition resources that are available to folks and you know that being said we know that every community is unique and that those resources challenges uh and, and uh, trouble accessing uh, any of those resources are going to look different in each community. So, uh, you know, in, at Project Red, we're targeting 10 communities across the state where we're working with them through st strategic partnerships to help lift up the work of community-led organizations, um, recognizing that those folks directly in the communities understand the challenges that are being faced uh, and they can be the most impactful because they really serve the needs of the people who are living there best. Um, of course, you know, my my work is with the schools most directly. Uh, so really implementing and maintaining permanent universal free school meals for students uh, is a critical step in ending child childhood hunger. Uh, and it really ensures that students can focus on learning and growing when they're at school and not worrying about where their next meals are coming from. And we also know that childhood food insecurity, when those students are well supported at school, that has a, a beneficial impact to their family as well. Uh, you know, if they're accessing meals at school, that frees up other resources at home for them to be able to purchase groceries, pay bills, buy medication, et cetera. Um, and then finally at Project Red, you know, we're, we have our uh, on the ground solutions, but we also have a, a policy and advocacy team um, and our work there really supports individuals and families um, through larger scale sustainable policy solutions as well. How is Project Bread similar or different from the model we know of uh, Food Bank? Um, good question. So, so Project Bread, you know, we help people of um, all ages access healthy food uh, that everyone needs to live. So we're located in East Boston, but we serve uh, the entire state and we foster cross-sector collaboration to address hunger at scale. Um, so we're working in schools, community health centers, we work with policymakers um, and hundreds of hunger relief organizations throughout the state. Uh, we also uh, run the Food Source Hotline, which is a really wonderful resource that we have. It's the only comprehensive um, information and referral service in Massachusetts, which helps residents enroll in SNAP benefits and find other food resource, uh, food access resources in their communities. Um, so it's, you know, we, we're addressing systemic 
issues through policy, we're also addressing on the ground challenges through our direct services work. Now, you mentioned uh, uh, working in schools and SNAP benefits, but can you speak more about giving meals to children when there is no school? Sure, yeah. Uh, we saw how critically important that was throughout the uh, school closures during the COVID-19 crisis. Um, we know that hunger doesn't end for students at the, at the end of the school day or over the weekend or over summer vacation. Uh, so there's a, a, a number of resources available to schools and to families um, through a program called Summer Eats, which allows uh, schools and community partners to run meal programs throughout the summer that are totally free um, for kids uh, under 18. There's no registration required. There's no ID requirement. Uh, if you are accessing, you don't even have to live in the town where the meals are being offered. Uh, so this is a really highly accessible program. Um, for for children to come to, to come and get meals while school is closed, oftentimes those meals are um, offered in conjunction with other programming. So we see these programs, yes, at schools, you know, out on the playground, maybe in a park. We also see them at libraries, boys and girls clubs, YWCA's, etc. Uh, and and within that, you know, there'll be programs for the students or the children to access as well. Um, so that's a that's a piece of the work that we do at Project Bread through our child nutrition team. Uh, and they work to support Summer Eats programming across the state. They'll give them uh, technical assistance when needed, provide resources, help the schools sort of navigate, uh, help the program sort of navigate that process of setting up their Summer Eats programming. Um, and then of course, there's all of the work that all of, I have to give a shout out to my school nutrition friends um, and all of the work that they do all the time uh, but certainly through the, the height of the COVID-19 pandemic and the closures, they were there every single day uh, working, providing meals, rolling with tons of challenges, supply chain shortages, um, different um, waivers being, being issued so that they could serve the meals through a grab-and-go meal site um, for the students. And uh, Project Red really helped to advocate and, and work with them um, to establish those programs as well. So uh, it was just a, we're super proud of all the work that they all did and um, are grateful that we get to be a part of it as well. That's amazing. I'm assuming um, the pandemic must have been hardest time you guys saw. Absolutely. Um, I mean, we saw, you know, a huge increase in, in phone calls to our food source hotline for folks looking for access uh, to SNAP benefits, SNAP screenings. Um, we helped with the PEBT rollout, which is the pandemic benefit issued to students when schools were closed um, so that they could, you know, get their price of school meals of certain on a PEBT card. Uh, and, you know, our food source hotline really facilitated a lot of that. And then, of course, um, the work with the, the schools and the coordinated effort around uh, where the meals were being served, how could the families be informed of where the meals were, uh, you know, the the various um, challenges that were being faced. My team worked a lot with, um, we kept hearing from, from school nutrition departments that they had uh, surplus food that they were trying to move because they had to switch their, um, their service model from a, you know, in cafeteria service model to this fully grab and go remote service model. So they really needed resources around that in the form of recipes, in the form of um, production models. So my team was really able to help work with them uh, directly and, and address those needs as they came to us in a, in a responsive way um, that helped them sort of navigate a lot of those challenges as well. So Sam, I'm just wondering, what are your thoughts on the role grocery uh, shopping plays in food security issues vis-a-vis -vis quality, price, education, et cetera? Yeah. Well, I, you know, I think grocery shopping um, is incredibly important because it allows you to have the autonomy around what you'd like to purchase. And when you go into the store, you know, you, you're able to select the foods that are appropriate for your dietary needs, for your cultural background, for uh, your family's preferences, whatever you may have. Um, 
and just even taste preferences and what you enjoy and having that autonomy uh, is incredibly important, I believe. And so really we're, you know, looking at SNAP benefits and strengthening SNAP. SNAP is a supplement, supplemental nutrition assistance program formerly called food stamps. Um, and this federal nutrition program really allows for people to purchase the food that they want, um, where and when they choose to purchase it. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's, I think, uh, when, you know, you're talking about SNAP benefits, strengthening access to SNAP, increasing SNAP benefits, making sure that the retailers have the support they need to, um, to be able to accept SNAP benefits so that folks can really shop where they need to through this already pre-established network of, of grocery stores, uh, and get the food that they need. Sam, thank you so much for joining us today. My pleasure. Yeah, thanks for taking the time to talk with me.